Ladies and gentlemen, you're probably wondering who in the world is this? Well, it's still big boy. It's still big boy sports, but it is a brand new day. And last month we started talking about volleyball on this channel. I've got to say, I continue to be impressed with this sport. Continue to be very much impressed with everything that I'm watching. It is National Volleyball Day. There are no college volleyball games today. So therefore, I, I didn't even know it was National Volleyball Day. So I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know until le later in the day that it was. And so, yeah, I I'm deciding to make a volleyball-related video today. And it is a beautiful day to talk to volleyball as the current top 25 is on your screen as of this moment. As you can see, there are teams in here that are definitely looking a little bit more fraudulent than others, but definitely very competitive. What I've noticed so far in my journey of watching college volleyball this year is that the games, you know, can definitely last a bit too long. And maybe that's because, you know, some of the TV games, you know, kind of last a little bit long. Like there's no reason it should take three hours to do you know five sets there have been some games like that where i'm just like oh this kind of needs to end at some point don't you think but alas i'm impressed with with it. like the, the 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 physical intensity the the tenacity of these ladies have just it's just been on a different level so far and you know the AVP is doing their league thing, but there's really no reason for me to talk about that because I'm not even watching that. Um, and that has already started, but again, I'm not even keeping track of that. I've been keeping track of all of this volleyball. There was a tremendous sweep, unfortunately. I, I can say it was a sweep of Nebraska and Louisville as Nebraska swept Louisville in three sets yesterday on ABC. There are some more college volleyball games on television, you know, as far as over the air, as in like free TV, you know, your ABCs, I wouldn't say there's an ABC, there's not another ABC window this year, but there will be some NBC windows coming down the line. And I believe in sometime in October, they will be coming down the line and it's going to be very, very intriguing to see how all that holds up. I did read something today, which looks like the CW is trying to pick up some volleyball, so I'm hoping and praying that there will be some volleyball picked up by the CW. Please, my fingers are crossed. I'm, I'm kind of excited for that because, you know, um, I, don't, I don't even know what the um, Huntington Beach and, and Manhattan Opens were like on ION and the CW. But I'm just, I was glad that they were there. I'm glad that they were on TV. I'm glad they were there. Now, the Pro Volleyball Federation has not announced, you know, their schedule yet. We do know it's 28 games, and the eight teams are confirmed. And I have not picked a team because they're supposed, there was supposed to be a Dallas team, but there is none this year. So it is what it is uh, for right now. And we're waiting that. So by the time, Hopefully by the time October rolls around and I do another video, which will be during the week break that I have for, for my job, uh, I'm hoping we will get a schedule by then. Of course, you know, um, you know, League One Volleyball has to deal with ESPN, but apparently, I guess maybe CBS broke off the deal with the Pro Volleyball Federation after this past year. Maybe, I don't know. Or maybe they're announcing more. Who knows? So what I've noticed, so again, what I've noticed in the college game specifically is that there are teams like Pitt who has swept every set. That they've swept every every set that they've had. They've won 27 straight sets. They're 9-0. Um, Olivia Babcock, Rachel Fairbanks, Tori Stafford. Really have not watched Pitt that much, if at all, this year, but I will be watching them. Uh, for whatever reason, I, I kind of figured that they were going to sweep Penn State, and so I was just like, yeah, they're going to sweep Penn State, so no reason to watch this. And lo and behold, they swept number four, the current number four team in the country last 
week they were number three, but now they are number four. And that Pitt team is absolutely, you know, just hitting at another level. They are playing with – and, again, I'm probably going to use intensity a lot, but they are playing the way that they are playing. Nebraska has been playing also very good, you know, you know, Andy Jackson – Bergen Riley, Marin Beeson. I mean, they just swept Stanford and Louisville. Again, that Louisville game was nationally televised on ABC, and they they have been they've been playing really good. They've been playing some really good volleyball lately. You know, after you know they kind of struggled a little bit. You know, but Nebraska's still Nebraska. They played very very good volleyball so far this year, and they are looking like one of the top teams of the nation. Along with Stanford, hey, I did watch them play Kentucky on Saturday night, on, and that went four sets, and that went like two and a half hours, of course. Um, Leah Rubin played pr- pretty good, you know, 21 kills in that game, and, you know, Kimmy Minor, you know, had a double-double. And it's fun trying to really, you know, finally really completely immerse myself with some of the terms, you know, it's like kills, aces, and all that stuff, you know, trying to get back into that. Because, again, I was a fan in the past, and I I was specifically a beach volleyball fan in the past. So I just want to preface that I was a beach volleyball fan in the past. So the indoor rules are, you know, eh, pretty much the same. I know a little bit different, but for the most part, things are kind of the same-ish. Um... Yeah, Penn State, you know, they 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 did lose to Pitt, but I mean they're still again one of the top teams in the nation. Louisville also. Creighton, Kansas, Purdue, they all, you know, were they all were able to, you know, you know, play some really good stuff over this past weekend. Creighton, you know, beat both Purdue and Kansas. You know, and they finally got the they finally got the big victories again. I watched them play Nebraska. They they went five sets with Nebraska, and they just could not get over the hump at the end. There was just something there that we were making mistakes. You know, you know net violations, couple errors here and there. You know, letting Nebraska just kind of get back into it and ease themselves in. And ultimately, at the end of the day, Creighton lost that game, and but. But the wins this weekend by Purdue, with, over Purdue and Kansas, very good stuff. Kansas is a team that, you know, kind of flew under a lot of people's radar for a moment, but they have gotten to where they are supposed to be with a big victory over Purdue. You know, um, again, yeah, Purdue, you know, still one of the top teams in the nation, but they did have these two bad losses this week. And again, it's it's one of those things that you know I can praise college volleyball for, is that the top teams will play each other. They will play each other like Texas and Wisconsin. You know they they are they're not they're not they're not playing the best. You know Texas isn't playing their best volleyball. You know with Maddie Skinner at the helm, you know leading the way with a .418 hitting percentage. You know. And the blocks that they were finally able to get, you know, you know, because again, Texas has lost a couple of games. They've they've had some head scratchers, including losing a set to Hawaii the other day. Wisconsin finally finding their groove, and they, you know, actually it was Wisconsin that beat Texas. And I'm talking about Texas beating Baylor this past week. Now, silly me, tricks up for kids. I'm reading my stuff wrong. But yeah, Wisconsin, Texas, a team like Kentucky, even though they're six and five, but it's like a very competitive six and five. Yeah. And then other there are some other surprises as well, like SMU, very much a surprising team, you know, that has won some games that maybe, you know, a lot of people didn't think they should win, but they won those games. Um Georgia Tech, another team that is just very, very consistent. In as far as how they've been playing, they've been playing some really good ball. Uh, Minnesota's another team that's disappointing to me so far. You know, they were like one and three. I know they've kind of rebounded a little bit, but they were one and three at one point during the season. Um, and I guess another team to maybe look out for is maybe Miami. They have jumped into the top 25 this week. 
And that's basically all I got to say so far. Like, again, you know, you know, Raven Colvin is leading the country in blocks per set with two, with a little bit over two per set for Purdue. Um, again, Cameron Turner, probably one of the best at assists in the country, along with Rachel Fairbanks again. But don't be don't be surprised, you know. I get it, you know. There's some teams that have, you know, they they play a lot different styles of volleyball than some of these other, you know, top teams to where they don't share as much. So, like again, Cameron Turner is only number three currently at you know assist per set, blocks per set. I don't know what Idaho State is on, but definitely, again, watch out for Purdue. Watch out for USC, Oregon. You know, the, the West Coast Big Ten teams are actually, you know, looking pretty competitive too. Um, and, again, you know, teams like Kansas, they will share the rock. You know, they will share that thing. And that's basically it on, you know, as far as that front. But, like, some other teams, you know, like A&M, you know, or, like, you know, uh, Florida or Oklahoma or, you know, some of these other, you know, power conference schools. And get it, this is a very power conference heavy, you know, top 25. And that's just the way college volleyball is. It's a very, very top heavy because all the top teams play each other. So, you know, a lot of the records look kind of lopsided. And again, yeah, there's, st there's still a couple unbeatens left. Pitt being one of them, and I forgot the other. I did forget the other, so don't quote me on who's the other unbeaten. I think there is one other unbeaten as we approach the end of National Volleyball Day, everyone. And I got to tell you, again, I'm impressed. There's going to be some games over the next few weeks that I'm going to be looking forward to. Um, I want to shout out those games again real quick before you know I really get into it. And say my final pieces on things before we get out of here. We get Penn State Purdue. That will be a top ten matchup. Wisconsin Minnesota, another big time game. So you know tomorrow. That's tomorrow night. So if you pair those up with those WNBA games tomorrow, you will have yourself a good time. Um, I'd say again, um, Oregon. You know, being a top tier team, you know, is going to have a game against Penn State. Um, not this Friday, but next Friday. And then I'm trying to think, um, I guess Michigan State Purdue on a, on a football Sunday. If you need that, that that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. I know there's some other games out there that are being televised. I know people have been complaining about, you know, the lack of television broadcast. The, the, there is one big, um, I believe it's Avid Volleyball on Twitter, who's a big, you know, big time you know, makes the makes the cool graphics and stuff like that. Really gets into the analytics and stuff like that. And I've been following her page. I want to say I want to say she, that's a female running the page. I've been following that page, and that page has really kept me in the loop as far as like matchups on TV, which there should be more. There's definitely room for matchups on TV. Like again, there's literally like two hours every Sunday where, you know, ABC could, you know, take away, you know, some of those NFL viewers that do not want to sit and watch some of these bad football teams because there has been some bad football in the NFL. Take away some of those viewers and get them watching, you know, a volleyball match that could go very, very well. And I hope that Nebraska-Louisville game, although it didn't go the way that it was supposed to go, I hope it got at least a decent amount of viewers. I know, I know the mouse likes to put in filler, you know, because I follow media rights and stuff like that. And I was, and again, I was wondering, hey, may, maybe that one-off deal that you know the CW did with ABP isn't going to be a one-off deal after I saw an article. So yeah, um, again, can't wait for the volleyball over the next couple of weeks. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be very, very intriguing to see who comes out ahead we still have a long way to go to get to the national championship which again i believe those times have been revealed and they even moved up the semifinals by 30 minutes so you know we're gonna have a sunday national championship on abc of course i know 
but it is what it is with that. I can't really can't really do anything to change that. Thanks. God, thanks, CFP. Thanks. Thanks for that college football playoff. Wow, you are you are you are really killing it. But yeah, we got a long way to go. We're waiting on, you know, at least one schedule from the PBF. So don't worry about it. We'll get to it when it comes out. Can't wait for that to come out. Can't wait to see what the PBF is rolling out. And I can't wait to see what League One Volleyball is kind of rolling out because they need to roll out some stuff too that they haven't rolled out yet. Um, we have the seasons for these pro leagues start in January. And then, you know, of course, the ABP League Tour is touring around the country right now. So if you're not tuned into that, you know, be sure to tune into it because, I, I mean, it, it's good stuff. Can't wait. I will probably go. I may go to an ABP tour game, you know, at some point, but not not now. Not now. Not yet. Um, but, yeah, that'll do it for me. Um, I can't wait to talk to you all tomorrow about college football and Wednesday about the NFL. It's going to be great. And, you know, we lost a couple of subscribers. I don't know where you all went. But I need you all to come on back. Trying to get to 300 subscribers before the end of the year. That would be greatly appreciated. And Big Boy Sports is signing out. And I hope you like the new do because that's going to be the look for a while. <laughs>